Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, so today we are going to be looking at a deck that just won a tournament in Japan. It's a Lolan Golem GX. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's won a tournament in Japan. I've got the deck list, and this is worth sharing. Now, a couple of quick caveats before we get rolling. Number one, remember, Japan does not play the same format we do. They are playing X and Y onwards. Now, to be honest, this deck does not really rely on many cards that are X and Y on, but it's still something that must be borne in mind. And secondly... This was posted initially on Reddit, I'll pop a link to that in the description, but essentially this was like a 10 person tournament, but it still won a tournament. It is still a deck that won a tournament. I'm not calling it the best deck in Japan. I'm saying it's a deck that won a tournament and it is therefore worth looking at. Now it all revolves around the Lolan Golem GX. Now I have long been a fan of this particular card. Because it's powerful. The main attack here, Super Electromagnetic Tackle, does 200 damage for 4 energy. That's a lot. Both in terms of energy and in terms of damage. But 200 is immense. You add a Choice Band on there, you're getting rid of Gardevoir GX, you're getting a 1-hit KO on Zoroark GX. I could keep going, but hopefully you get the point. There's the odd Pokemon like Decidueye that might be able to survive this hit. But most Pokemon can't. Most Pokemon will go down to a Super Electromagnetic Tackle with a Choice Band. And that is very important. The other crucial thing here is Heavy Rock GX that does 100 damage. That's not very much. But your opponent cannot play any cards from their hand during their next turn. As far as I'm concerned, this is maybe the best GX attack around. It is phenomenal. Okay, Dialga's better, but that's not been released yet. Your opponent draws a card, but they don't play any supporters, attach any energy, evolve any Pokemon. They can draw a card, they can attack, but they can't do anything else. So in theory, you make sure they can't KO you. You take a little KO with this, I don't know, maybe something like a Zorua. And then, they can't KO you back, you then take a big KO with Super Electromagnetic Tackle. This has got to have some potential, and it does. Now, I said the attack is expensive. There are two main cards that are used to pay the cost of the attack here, and they are Double Colorless Energy and Electrode. Electrode is the other really key part of this deck that makes it work. The ability Bazap Thunder, once during your turn you may knock out this Pokemon, so your opponent gets a prize, and then you attach it to Alolan Golem as... To lightning energy and that's what makes this viable here that's what gives it the speed it needs to thrive a lowland golem with an electrode and a double colorless energy will get going in a single turn and that's phenomenal now we'll go through the cards in order in a minute but i've got to jump ahead just a little bit while we're talking about electrode because there are two supporter cards here that really really help us out. Firstly, we've got Ace Trainer. Now, I did say this is X and Y on, and I did say that there are very few cards that have been rotated that will really hurt this in standard. Unfortunately, both of these supporters fall into that category. Ace Trainer was only released in Ancient Origins, and what it does, if you're behind on prizes, you shuffle your hand into your deck, so does your opponent, you get 6 cards, they get 3. So what you do here is you use Electrode on turn 2 of the game, you then immediately give yourself a new hand of 6 with Ace Trainer, that's pretty good, and you give your opponent a hand of 3, they're drawing very, very little, which should give you the chance to get ahead, use your GX attack, etc. The other one, and this is again a card which has rotated, is Teammates. Teammates allows you to search for any two cards as long as you had a Pokemon KO'd 
during your opponent's last turn. Now, obviously, Electro doesn't count. That will be KO during your turn. It's just the other supporter here, which we don't have in standard. But that combination of Ace Trainer and Electrode is wonderful, not to mention, of course, you can use Tapu Lele to search for it. Speaking of which, rounding out the Pokemon, we've got Free Tapu Lele, obviously, because it's amazing. It searches for any supporter. We've got a copy of Shaman, just because it's still legal in their format and it draws lots of cards. We have got a Sensu Oracorio. It's a Night March counter. It's there because Night March has low HP Pokemon and pops them all in the discard. So you need to be playing a Night March counter. Oracorio comes in here. And an Alolan Volpix just to help you set up. If you've got a rare candy in hand, you could potentially just use Alolan Volpix, grab an Electrode and an Alolan Golem, and then get completely set up the following turn. That's kind of cool. Now, before we quickly run through the trainer cards that are in this deck, there are a couple of other things about which I need to make you aware. Now, in terms of the rotation having happened, it's not all that much, to be honest. It doesn't hurt the deck too much. You do lose Lysander, but you've got Guzma, so it's okay. You do lose teammates and Ace Trainer, which does kind of suck. And, of course, you lose Versus Seeker, but you always lose Versus Seeker. There's nothing you can do. You lose Shaman, but you're only playing one of them. We can live with that. It's not a huge difference. Obviously, you are losing some cards, but it's not the end of the world. The one really cool card you are losing, you're losing the good Voltorb if you're not playing this in Expanded. If this Voltorb is damaged, and that damage knocks Voltorb out, the attacking Pokemon takes five damage counters. That's kind of cool. Extra damage is always good. It is by far the best Voltorb, but we can only have it in Expanded. Japan has it in their regular format. The other thing I need to mention here is you have a horrific weakness. Lycanroc is seeing a huge amount of play in Expanded. Buzzwall won the last really big Japanese tournament. And I did do a video about that. Check the link in the description. Fighting is a bad, bad weakness to have at the moment so to be perfectly honest with you it's risky you lose a few cards it's got a bad weakness but the raw power and potential is there this is not a deck that's ever going to rule the format weakness is bad and for our format you lose a couple of cards but there is so much potential in Alolan Golem I love that it won this big tournament so going through the trainer cards quite quickly he plays Sycamore and N, they're the best supporter cards in the format. They are your best options for drawing cards. A mixture of Lysander and Guzma. Lysander and Guzma both grab a Pokemon from the bench and drag it into the active. Guzma is also a switch. Lysander isn't. It's nice to have a mixture of the two. The previously mentioned Ace Trainer and teammates I don't need to go into detail about. And there's a copy of Bridget here. Well, of course there is. Because turn one, you Tapu Lele for a Bridget and then you get all your basics out and then you get set up that's how it works in terms of item cards there is nothing particularly stunning ultra ball is the best pokemon search we've got versus seeker allows you to reuse supporters and is a four of in every deck in japan and every expanded deck bar a few random exceptions choice band does extra damage to exes and gxs and against non-exes and non-gxs you're doing enough damage anyway Rare Candy is needed to evolve into your Stage 2, a Lolan Golem, and Field Blower here is very important. Gets rid of stuff like Fighting Fury Belt to bring down your opponent's HP, but it also gets rid of the tools on Agar Boda, which is very important indeed, because otherwise you don't have Electrode's ability. Now, there are two other item cards there. One appears to be a Rescue Stretcher, which, well... You use it to get your Pokemon back. It, it's kind of important. The other one, for the life of me, I can't quite make it out. We can only see a tiny, tiny bit of it. If anyone can identify that card, let me know in the comment section. I'll pin it so everyone else can see. And obviously, there's four double colorless energy here because, well, like I said earlier, you use it to pay for your attack. Here is the list in its entirety. It is great. And you can see there the card I couldn't quite make out. 
It is a wonderful deck, and I think that the weakness to fighting is going to be an issue moving forward. And I think that if we want to play it in standard, we lose stuff like teammates and ace trainer, which are so important. But I do think Alolan Golem has more potential than almost any of the GXs we've got. And I do think it's a deck worth playing around with. And when I found out it won a tournament, albeit in Japan, albeit a small tournament, I had to come and share it with you guys. So... I hope you enjoyed it, but as always, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about this deck. I need to know what you think about this deck. Chuck, all your thoughts about Alolan Golem down in the comment section. I can't wait to read them. Go nuts! Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and so on, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash ptcgradio. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.